Hello fellow YouTubers, Bear Prepper here. Today we're going to make homemade yeast cakes out of dried hops. This is probably about my sixth or seventh time trying this. I did some more research and I think I've got it figured out this time. What I did was I ordered 10 pounds of fresh hops. And uh, I tried making this with the fresh hops. And of course it didn't work. And I had to dry them because they were starting to go bad. So then I switched over to a recipe for dry hops. And I tried that about five or six times with no luck in actually making any bread from it. That rose very well. It did rise, but not enough to make it a viable option. The reason I'm looking at this is yeast is eventually going to go bad on us. And if we can keep hops on hand then we can make our own yeast cakes. And we can have regular yeast bread all the time. We don't have to use the sourdough and we don't have to try to collect yeast out of the air and all that kind of good stuff. So, let's get started here. The first thing you have to do is put a little water in a pot with one cup of dry hops. And this is what the hops look like. If you've never seen them, they're like little flowers. And the water is going to pull the pollen out of the hops as it boils. And you're going to bring it to a boil. And it's going to smell a little bit. And it's going to turn yellow. Now, I thought that the hops is where the yeast came from. After doing further research, I found that the only things the hops do with the liquids that are there is they prevent bad bacteria from growing. Because one of the problems with collecting yeast from the air is that the bad bacteria gets in there and your yeast spoils before it completes. Well, the pollen that's in the hops actually prevents the bad bacteria from growing. So you are basically catching the yeast from the air, but you don't have to fight the battle of the bad bacteria. So we have this. We're going to let it boil and then we'll drain it. And then over here, I have three peeled potatoes in water. So we're going to boil those until they can be mashed. We're going to take the water out and set it aside and then mash the potatoes. Okay, so then you're going to take your hops out once it's cool enough. And you're going to put them in a strainer. And you're going to push the juices out of them and then just discard them. All you want is the juice that's left over. You're going to take your potatoes out of the water. You're going to mash those. Don't add any butter, salt, or anything like that. And you're going to retain your water to make your yeast cakes. I'm going to add a tablespoon of yeast to my hops broth. And that's what's going to get the process started. So always remember when you store these, maintain at least one tablespoon of yeast so that you can make your cakes. And if I remember correctly, and this will make... Um, a 9x9 nine nine pan, I believe, of yeast cakes. But we'll, I'll show you when it's done. So we're going to add our tablespoon of yeast to get it started. Once your hot broth is down to 100 degrees. And you can usually tell, you can use a thermometer if you want, that it's the temperature of a baby's bottle. If that helps you moms. And we're just going to let that get our hops started. Remember, the hops is what stops the bad bacteria from growing. The yeast is going to give us a start rather than waiting for the air to do it all. As hopefully you can see that. So what I have is one cup of flour. And to that, I'm going to add some of my potato water. And we're trying to make a paste-like dough. So don't add too much or you're going to have to cook it down. I know, my arm makes a better picture, huh? And you just don't want it to be lumpy. Like my new Christmas outfit. Isn't that a pretty color? Thank you. 
So that's the right texture. I've just got to get the rest of the flour incorporated. You should mix kind of slowly, otherwise you're going to give yourself a lot of lumps. Now we're going to add the mashed potatoes and two tablespoons of sugar. I'm going to do the sugar first because it'll be easier to dissolve into it. A little short. I'm just going to mix it up. And then add your potatoes. We're going to mix well. So see, it's really not very hard. I think I've spent maybe 15 minutes working on this, maybe 20. Well, maybe longer. I took the dogs out and let the water boil. And now I'm going to add, add my hops water. As you can see, the yeast, I don't know if you can tell or not, the yeast has started to ferment. I'm just going to stir it up real good. Make sure that yeast is dissolved. And pour it on top. Oops, we got a couple of hops petals. We'll take them out because they may not taste very good. They won't taste very good. And then we're going to mix it up. And we're looking for a medium soft dough. You may have to add more flour. But I like to add cornmeal at this point if it's too runny. So let me get it mixed in really good. Now, it's not supposed to be a hard dough. It's one of those liquidy doughs. And I actually think this is perfect. Supposed to be soft. Well, maybe maybe it is a little runny. Let me put a little cornmeal in it. We're going to eventually be adding four cups of cornmeal. So I'm going to measure out a cup here so I know how much I've already used. And I think that's probably enough. Just want to get it a little thicker. And you put the sugar in to feed the yeast. Now I'm going to put this in my dehydrator to rise. But you can do Yankee Prepper's way and put a pan of boiling water in your oven. And then set your dough inside there. That works really well too. But since I have the dehydrator, I'm just going to use it. So I've probably used, oh, maybe two tablespoons out of my cup of cornmeal. Just to get it a little thicker. And remember, cornmeal, as the water hits it, it's going to get even thicker. Because it's going to absorb the liquids. There you go. See how the fork kind of leaves a trail for a moment? That's a good consistency. 
And we're going to let this rise until it's double. Okay, as you can see, it has doubled in size. That's been one hour at 100 degrees, well, 95 degrees in the dehydrator. So if you want to do it that way, it works wonderfully. So now what I'm going to do is punch it down. And we're going to start adding cornmeal. Maximum of four cups. And that's one. The rest of the one cup that I used to thicken it before I put it in the dehydrator. And you're just going to mix it in until it forms a stiff dough. Do a little at a time because it is cornmeal and it will get thicker than what you think as it absorbs the liquid. And here's two. I'm going to get my hands in here shortly. I want to get it not so quite so sticky first. I'm just mixing it up. I like to use my little knife because it bends with the bowl. But you can use whatever you want. You can just stick your hands in it and do it. It will look lumpy because the mashed potatoes are real potatoes. If you don't have real potatoes, of course, you probably won't in your food storage. You can use mashed potato flakes. You just won't have your potato water. All right, so now it's time to get my hands in there. I'm just going to mix it up. And what you're trying to do is get a consistency that you can cut. Because we're going to cut it into cakes. Now your cakes are half inch thick. And th three by three is what they were in the olden days. So that's what you want to get it to. And we're almost there. I don't think I'm going to need four cups. I think we might be looking at two and a half. Because I've still got some cornmeal on the bottom here. So you just want to add the cornmeal until you don't need any more. You don't want to over add. So I'm just going to do a half a cup. Because if it gets crumbly, it's really hard to make yeast cakes out of. See, that's a nice stiff dough. It's not sticking to my hand much anymore. Yet it's still holding its shape. And there we go. So now I'm going to take a pan and press it into it. Don't put anything in your pan. You don't oil it or anything like that. Just plop it in. And you could roll it out if you wanted, but I like to have the edges nice. So I'm just going to press it into my 9x13. So I was wrong, it wasn't a 9x9, nine nine. it makes a 9x13. Now, when you're 
getting ready to make your next batch, you want to save one of your yeast cakes and you can use that as your yeast starter for your next batch. And so you'll always have yeast for making bread. So now we're going to cut it into three inches. And we're going to let those dry just a little bit so that we can get them out of the pan. And then we'll put it in the dehydrator at 95 degrees. Or you can just put them on the counter and just flip them continually to let them dry in the dehydrator. You don't really have to flip them that much. Once or twice and you'll be fine. But on the counter you really need to keep flipping them because the water is going to seep to the bottom. Okay, I had forgotten to put cornmeal on the bottom of my pan to stop these from sticking. So it's almost easier, I'm finding, with this batch to just press it into a square on your table. And run your knife through it. And then just lift it up and toss it on your dehydrated tray. So, I'm going to put these on the dehydrator at 95 degrees, turning once or twice, flipping them until dry. Okay, it's been about four hours, maybe five. They are just about dry. I'm going to take them out. And uh, put them on, a, I guess just leave them on this. And just let them finish off. And then we're going to make some bread with them. Aren't you excited to see how they work? And you're going to use, uh, if you're going to do four loaves, if I remember correctly, we're going to use two of these. So that would be four. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. Thirty-two loaves of bread. Not bad.